What you seek, it's a bridge. Like, like an Einstein Rosen bridge? More like a rainbow bridge. Welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. The biggest reveal in Thor Love and Thunder is Eternity. Just like that, Eternity is in the MCU. Oh my God, okay, it's happening. The embodiment of the universe is just sitting there at the center of the universe in his water world reality, granting wishes like some genie. Well, it's the only one wish, apparently. To reach eternity, you need a key, and the key is Stormbreaker. Well, not exactly. It's the energy that the magical axe summons the Bifrost Bridge. You need the Bifrost to enter eternity's realm, and to summon the Bifrost, you need Stormbreaker. It's a little more complicated than that, and don't worry, we'll explain it all in this video. But if the Bifrost is the key, then we have to ask, how and why is that the case? What's so special about the Rainbow Bridge? What is its connection to eternity? And also, who's responsible for all of this? It's all a f***ing mystery. Well, we uncovered something huge about the Bifrost connection to eternity. The answer was right under our noses ever since the first Thor movie, and none of us saw it. Till now. If we are correct, this huge reveal could unveil a massive mystery that will explain the secret history of the Marvel Universe. Trust me, I am not overhyping this. This theory is gonna be wild. The Bifrost gives me access to everything the Nine Realms has to offer. I mean, it's all mine for the taking. Okay, so let's quickly go over the rules Love and Thunder establishes about Eternity and how to reach him. Valkyrie describes him as a very powerful entity at the center of the universe. He will grant the wish of the first person who reaches him. Just one wish. A very stingy genie, if you ask me. Three wishes to be exact. An ixnay on the wishing for more wishes. To reach Eternity, you must first travel to the center of the universe and then enter his realm through his statue. But the portal to this water world is locked, and the key is the Bifrost. Now, you might be confused on why Gore needs Stormbreaker. That's because Stormbreaker is the only object in the universe that can summon the Bifrost. Asgard was destroyed, and so was the Rainbow Bridge, making Stormbreaker the only way to reach Eternity. Well, there's also Heimdall's convenient ability to summon the bridge right before his death. But I still think there is an importance to the axe beyond its ability to summon the Bifrost that I'm going to get to just a little later in the video. The reason why the Bifrost is the key is because of the seal on Eternity statue. That symbol is incredibly similar to the one that the Bifrost creates. Now they're not exactly the same, but the patterns do resemble each other in a way that we know it's not a coincidence. Either this is one of the most elaborate hoaxes ever created, or basically it's for real. So far, the symbol didn't seem to matter that much. It was mostly an inconvenience. It's like a really annoying sign that basically says, Thor was here, I burned this symbol into the ground, I'm an inconsiderate a-hole. That man has no regard for lawn maintenance. But finally, Love and Thunder made this symbol matter. The symbol on Eternity statue is the lock, and the symbol the Bifrost creates is the key, meaning that the runes are meant to fit into each other in some sort of magical, cosmic way. Oh, it's quite simple. If you want a friend, you speak the password and the doors will open. So you have to wonder, why does the Bifrost open the door to Eternity's statue? Well, the significance of this symbol was right under our noses ever since Phase 1. The meaning of the symbol is some serious deep lore stuff. It's not even something from the comics, it's in our own human history in real life. The MCU is real life. Of course it is, buddy. We read ancient scrolls and inscriptions and all that other old and dusty stuff. We researched day and night for months, well, okay, more like a week, and we uncovered an earth-shattering truth. This symbol is based on the Celtic knot. And do you know what those knots mean? Ready to get your mind blown? Drum roll, please. Can anybody guess? It represents eternity. You just blew my mind. <laughs> the Celtic knots are designed as interlocking loops, representing the concept that there is no beginning nor an end. They represent how everything in the universe is interconnected, the intertwining of life and eternity. Norse myths are also embedded in similar ideas of endless loops, the eternity of life, death, and rebirth. Sure, the Celts' idea of eternity isn't the same as the Marvel entity, but in-universe, this connection makes so much more sense, and this stuff goes even deeper. Take the spiral knots. They have a myriad of meanings and interpretations, but one of them is that the knots represent the heavens, cosmos, and water, the same exact three aspects that appear in eternity's water reality. That reality is like a reflection of the water and sky, and in the middle, there's eternity the embodiment of the cosmos. So there you have it. Ever since 2011's Thor, Marvel has been hinting at a connection to eternity. I have no idea if this was the plan all along. I mean, probably not, but it'd be awesome if it was. Are you yawning in the middle of this while I'm breaking it down? Huh? Did you hear what I said? 
But this doesn't answer the question of who put that symbol on Eternity statue and why the Bifrost is the key to it. Well, since the Bifrost is the key, then that means it connects to the Asgardians. Here's the thing about the Bifrost and why it's so special. The Bifrost was described as an Einstein-Rosen bridge. An Einstein-Rosen bridge is a theoretical connection between two different points of space-time. The wormhole. Now what's important here is that the Bifrost creates tears in space-time, warping the universe and allowing for instant transportation, which is different from other wormholes in the MCU, like jump points. These are pre-existing points in space that allow for interstellar travel. When the Bifrost energy hits Eternity statue, it opens up a portal to his realm. The door isn't just a hole in the wall. It's not like the water world reality is physically behind Eternity statue, meaning that the lock is also a wormhole that leads to Eternity's realm. And what other artifact in the MCU can create wormholes at will? That's right, the Space Stone. And which Asgardian possessed the Space Stone in ancient times? The Tesseract was the jewel of Odin's treasure room. Meaning the Tesseract was in Odin's vault and somehow it ended up on Earth. And in this book of Norse mythology in the movie Thor, we see Odin holding the Tesseract. And this brings us to the spicy part of our theory. One of the MCU's plot holes is the Infinity Gauntlet in Odin's vault. Fake. Yeah, yeah, this was retconned and the gauntlet was fake, but that still doesn't answer why Odin had it. So if you've been following the channel, then you know that we believe that Odin collected the Infinity Stones a long time ago. And yes, we are not the only people who've had this theory, but with the connection to eternity, we have a lot of new ideas that might prove this theory is canon. Hold on to your butts. Thor the Dark World revealed that the Dark Elves were planning to use the Reality Stone to return the universe into darkness. Now this connects to these two videos where we speculated that the Chaos King or Entropy are the creators of the Necrosword and that they are planning to cover the universe in darkness. At the time, Asgard was at war with the Dark Elves, but the Reality Stone gave Malekith a serious advantage. The Dark Elves reigned absolute. So the Asgardians had to find a way to counter the Aether, and they might have been aware of the other Infinity Stones. So what if Odin decided to travel the universe searching for the stones? And during his travels, Eternity summoned Odin. Eternity is the embodiment of the universe, so the Dark Elves' plan was a threat to him. Eternity was the one who gave Odin the Space Stone, and in exchange, Odin will defeat the Dark Elves and protect the universe from the other stones. Based on what we know about the stones, Eternity is one of the ancient entities who created them. We see that on the wall in the Temple in Morag. Now we do see Odin's father being the one who defeated the Dark Elves, and he already used the Bifrost then. But our theory still works. Thor was about 1500 years old by the time Odin died, so Odin must have been around for a while back when Bor was still king. Odin quickly learned how to use the Space Stone, and more importantly, how to weaponize it. And with its energy, he created the Bifrost. And this is how they turned the tide in that final battle against the Dark Elves. And there is proof that Odin did in fact create the Bifrost with the Space Stone. In a tie-in comic book for Thor The Dark World, it's revealed that Thor used the Space Stone to reactivate the Bifrost. Remember, Thor destroyed the bridge to stop Loki. Then, after the Battle of New York, Thor returned the Tesseract back to Asgard, and they recharged the Bifrost with the stone's energy. It makes sense that the Bifrost is reopened with the Space Stone, because Odin originally used the same energy to create the Bifrost in the first place. But considering that the Space Stone can teleport its wielder anywhere, why didn't Thanos use it to go to Eternity? Well, this is why Eternity's statue is sealed and can only be opened with the Bifrost. Odin must have got his hands on the Reality Stone, building the center of the universe, changing reality in a way that only the Bifrost can open the door. Sire the Aether, shall we destroy it? Bury it deep. Somewhere no one will ever find it. The Reality Stone was hidden in some secret chamber that can only be accessed during the Convergence, and those happen once every 5,000 years. But with the Space Stone, Odin could have teleported into the chamber and grabbed the Aether whenever he needed it. And once he got two stones, he had to get all of them. Infinity Stones? How do you have these? Oh shit. And with this great power came great temptation, and Odin was corrupted by the power of the stones. This must have been around the time when Odin and Hela were conquering the Nine Realms. Odin decided to give up the stones after using the Time Stone to peer into the future. Now this ties into the Norse myths. Odin sacrificed his eye to achieve true wisdom and the ability to see the future. The Time Stone allows you to see the future, and it was housed inside the Eye of Agamotto. So it's more of a symbolic connection to the myths. Going forward in time, to view alternate futures, to see all the possible outcomes of the coming conflict. 
Seeing the future is the reason why Odin stopped this crusade and exiled Hela. He saw everything that will happen in the future and all the possibilities, and all those timelines led to Thanos. Though he couldn't see beyond the moment of his own death, that's a rule that was established about the Time Stone. I've spent so many years peering through time, looking at this exact moment, but I can't see past it. But he saw enough, and maybe the replica served as a deterrent for the rest of the universe. If other powerful beings believed that Odin had the stones, then no one would want to mess with him. Though, once the stones started showing up again, it became obvious that Odin didn't have any of the stones. But it can't be a coincidence that Thanos went after the stones only after Odin's death. Kind of like the Mad Titan was a little afraid of the All-Father. I'm not afraid anymore! Ha <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, ever since Odin saw the future, he must have been working to ensure that the perfect future he saw will come to pass. He made sure that the timeline would play out exactly as he saw it, so that perfect outcome will come true. If I tell you what happens, it won't happen. He was trapped in an eternal loop. That means that Odin knew about Loki's betrayal before he was even born. He knew that his wife would die, that his home would be destroyed, and that most of his people would die. God, no wonder he needs his own sleep. So if you're still unconvinced that Odin collected the stones, here's more proof. There is something very interesting about the soul stone and the whole sacrifice thing on Vormir. When Thanos sacrifices Gamora, something very interesting happens. A portal opens above the Vormir cliff, which is very similar to the portals that the space stone creates. It's also similar to the vortex created when the Bifrost hits the sky. Once the portal is open in the sky, you can see something very interesting behind Thanos. It looks exactly like the light of the Bifrost, as if the rainbow bridge just opened behind him. Then there's a flash of light and Thanos finds himself in a pool of water at the bottom of the cliff and somehow the Soul Stone is now in his hand. Almost as if the Bifrost teleported Thanos to another place and also teleported the Soul Stone into his hand. The same thing happens after Black Widow's death. So is it too far-fetched to say that Odin created the whole thing on Vormir? And that's not all. Don't forget about how the Red Skull ended up on Vormir. The Space Stone sent him there. The portal that the stone created was very similar to how the Bifrost shoots Asgardians into space. Mystery solved. Look, I have no idea if the MCU will ever confirm this, but there are so many connections that there is no way that some of this is not real. Now, let's go back to Stormbreaker because the fact that it can summon the Bifrost is very important. Remember, to summon the Bifrost on Asgard, there's a whole structure that was built to create that immense energy. So it's not a small thing that an axe can do the same thing. But Stormbreaker doesn't need that spinning cannon structure. It has something way better, much stronger. Thor. The structure on Asgard uses this complicated mechanism, generating lots of lightning to power up the Bifrost energy. And Thor is literally a living lightning storm, an infinite power source for the Bifrost. And everyone who ever harnessed the energy of the Space Stone needed a serious power source. Stormbreaker is made out of Uru metal, the same as Mjolnir, though the hammer cannot summon the Bifrost. At least not yet. Since Odin saw the future, he knew that Thor would need Stormbreaker, so he had the dwarves at Nidavellir build it from the most powerful Uru mold ever. A king's weapon, meant to be the greatest in Asgard. In theory, it could even summon the Bifrost. My guess is that Odin had Stormbreaker made after Thor brought the Space Stone back to Asgard. Odin embodied the Uru mold with the Space Stone energy, the same as he did with the Bifrost. This way, Stormbreaker could summon the Bifrost, using Thor's lightning as a power source. And we know that Uru reacts in a very special way to the stones, since the Infinity Gauntlet is also made out of Uru, and it's capable of harnessing the power of all six stones. And what happened when the power of the stones goes against Stormbreaker? Stormbreaker wins. It's capable of withstanding the power of the Infinity Stones, almost like the axe was able to counter the stone's energy. And how do you destroy an Infinity Stone vision? I think if it were exposed, to a sufficiently powerful energy source, something very similar to its own signature. Its molecular integrity could fail. The reason why Wanda was able to destroy the Mind Stone is because she herself got her abilities from it. Well, this was sort of retconned by WandaVision, but yeah, the stone unlocked her energy. That's why the axe can withstand the energy of the stones and why it can summon the Bifrost. And don't forget, Stormbreaker is way more powerful than Thor even knows. So far, whenever Thor unleashes the power of the axe, it's with his lightning. But now we know that the Bifrost can shoot pure Bifrost energy out of it, and the Bifrost can become a world-destroying beam if it's kept open for too long. It's like a very slow Death Star. <laughs> One eternity later. 
All right, one last thing about all of this. Eternity, what happens to this entity now? If Odin built the temple and the lock, then he had to do it for a reason. And now that the door is wide open, that doesn't bode well for the universe. The MCU is heading for a multiversal conflict, and Love and Thunder might just have begun the end of the universe. There's that mural wall in Morag, and if you notice, it seems like Eternity is being killed, stabbed by Entropy. Now, Entropy is an entity similar to Eternity, but also, Entropy is how many people believe the universe will end. With Gore opening the door to Eternity, he might have set up a chain of events that will lead to the end of the universe, and what is shaping up to be the MCU's adaptation of Secret Wars. But, Secret Wars is the theory for another video. See you soon. So that's just our theory and explanation of the Bifrost and why it's the key to eternity. But what do you think about all this? Did Odin collect the stones? Do you have any proof? Let us know in the comments below where you can at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, be sure to subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.